Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm gonna be doing something that mixes two of my passions and that's fashion and face painting. And I'm gonna be doing something based off of the work of one of my all-time favorite fashion designers and that is Iris Van Herpen. She interned with Alexander McQueen which is also one of my all-time favorite fashion designers and if you haven't seen her stuff, it is insane. Like it can't even be put into words how completely unique her work is. And for this look, I'm inspiring myself on a collection that she launched in January of this year called Shift Souls. And it's a beautiful collection and in it, she has this mask that's made of metal and I'm going to be drawing that mask on my face, but I'm also going to be filling it in with the color scheme from one of the dresses from this collection. So that pretty much sums it up. I've already gone ahead and covered up my eyebrows. If you don't know how to do that, I have a full tutorial on how to do it that you can watch by clicking up here. And before I begin, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Your support really means a lot to me. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do this kind of paint by number style where I'm gonna start with the outlines because if I make any mistakes, it'll be easier to erase them and redraw the lines. Normally I'd leave the darkest color for the end, which is black in this case, but I just wanna make sure that my lines are as even as possible. And I don't have any foundation on, I think I will be applying some just to the center of my face where there's gaps in the mask, but I'm gonna worry about that later. And to draw the lines, I'm gonna go in with my favorite black face paint and that is the Wolf Water Activated Black Face Paint. And I'm going to be using this very, very long paint brush. It is a liner brush by Royal and Langnickel. And this allows me to draw really, really precise and thin lines. So I just need a little dropper bottle. And I think I might drop points of reference with a white pencil first. Okay, so I've got this pencil, it's actually an off-white, it's like a really, really pale yellow, but I'm gonna use this to draw my references first. I am going to have to modify the design a little bit because the mask originally goes directly over the model's eyes, but we'll make it work. So I'm kind of just going to trace all the lines with this pencil first to make sure I've got them where I want them. And this is a lot easier to clean up than the black, obviously, so. Normally I freehand everything, you guys know that. And I mean, I am freehanding this, but I usually don't do these kind of guidelines. But I thought today, I, I probably should, because this design is a little, a little tricky. I'm just basically gonna try to get it right on my right side first. I'm gonna do the entire right side first, and then I'll move on and just replicate it on the left. So when I made those glue gun tears for my Pat McGrath look, I actually tried recreating this mask using my glue gun and I was not very successful. So then I had the idea of just drawing it directly on my face. But I wish I could own this mask. I wish. So here's where the design starts to get a little modified. And this mask is quite tricky to do directly on the face because of all the volumes in the face. It's not going to look exactly the same as the mask, but I'm pretty okay with that. I'm surprised that I'm getting the proportions pretty, pretty okay. So that's half the mask. She also has an extra kind of bit. Okay. Okay, so that's half the mask. I'm gonna go ahead and trace this on the other side as well. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done my entire face and neck, and I'm gonna outline all of this using the black face paint. So I'm gonna take the face paint and I just need a water dropper bottle, just a few drops, and my long liner paintbrush. And I know that the mask is made of metal, and it's reflective, but for this, I think the black lines would stand out more because metallic makeup shows up differently when the light is hitting it, so it could kind of erase some of the lines depending on the lighting. And so I didn't wanna risk that. I really wanted to maintain all the lines very visible. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and follow these lines. So I'm kind of just gonna start where I started off with the white lines as well. Oh, see, that line is a little, little iffy. I always go in and fix it up. I'm not making the mixture of the paint too watery because I don't want to risk the paint running on my face, but it should be watery enough that you're able to draw very precise lines. I will say this brush does take some getting used to. Like some of my lines, as you can see, are a little, like these are thicker than I want them to be because I'm not quite used to this brush. 
It's a really weird feeling using this brush, but it does help get cleaner lines. But I'm also going to alternate with a smaller little brush. For the longer lines, I prefer using this liner brush. It just stabilizes the line a bit. This line isn't quite where I want it. So I'm just going to take some water on a Q-tip and try to fix that up. Even though it is right over my brow cover-up, I really don't like messing too much with brow cover-ups. But I think it's necessary in this case. Luckily this is water activated paint so it just comes off with a little bit of water. But then the water also reactivates the glue. So that's a little bit of an issue. You can see it's starting to get purple there. That's just the glue reactivating. So I'm just going to go back in with my little yellow color corrector to just fix that up a little bit. I want the lines to be basically parallel, so to follow the same kind of shape. These lines are definitely coming out way thicker than I intended them to, which is a little bit of an issue, but... Well, this part close to the eye, it does have sort of like a thick cat eye thing going on. Ooh, that tickles. Ooh. So this brush pretty much does half the work for you. It is a really, really interesting brush. And this is pretty much the gist of it. So I'm going to keep doing this to the rest of my face and I'll come back when I'm finished. Five hours later. Now I am finally finished with the outlines. Had a little dinner break, not going to lie. I'm going to start filling them in. And the eye area is still a little messy. Still haven't cleaned that up, but I'm going to start filling in everything first and then worry about that later. So I'm going to do the lightest colors in the center and get darker as I go along. Ideally, I would do it with face paint, but I don't have face paint in these colors that I'm going to be using and to mix it would be a nightmare. So I'm using liquid lipsticks instead because they're very peachy and purpley tones. So lipsticks are just a perfect match. I'm also going to be using a concealer and a color corrector as well. So I kind of created my scale of colors and I'm starting with a white concealer, moving on to a peach color corrector, and then various different colors of liquid lipsticks. So to start off, I'm actually going to be mixing the ColourPop White Concealer with the Wet n Wild Peach Color Corrector. And I'm just going to mix it on the back of my hand. So I just grabbed a bunch of each color and then I'm going to mix it together. So I don't think this will be enough, but let's try it out. So I'm going to be applying that in this area here. And I have to make sure I set it under my eyes, otherwise it will crease. And I'm using that to clean up the black outlines as I go along. I'll probably have to go in with a smaller paintbrush to get into the very thin areas. Just kind of went over the black line a little bit too much. I can fix that up later. So as I said, this is pretty much paint by numbers. You're just filling in. The entire area if you've ever colored a coloring book it's pretty much exactly like that okay definitely need a smaller brush but while I've got this one I'm gonna go ahead and do this side so I grabbed a flat kind of tapered paintbrush and I'm gonna use that to go into the very thin lines and into the little corners I've never used this brush before, it's kind of tricky. Be careful because even though these are cream colors, they can reactivate the black face paint. So try not to spread it too much over the black, but a little bit should be fine. Then once that's done, I'm going straight in with the peach color corrector for the next part. I'm waiting for this concealer layer to kind of set before I set it with powder because it is quite thick so I'm just giving it a little bit of time and I'm thinking because this area here isn't really closed off so I'm thinking I'm gonna close it off here so that I can paint this as well and with the doe foot applicator I can't get into all the nooks and crannies so I'm gonna go in with my trusty little paintbrush again and then for the third color I'm using the NYX lip lingerie in dusk to dawn and these 
I don't know if mine have gone bad, but they've got a kind of weird texture to them. They're, I don't know how to explain it. They're not really a liquid to matte lipstick. They're like a cream lipstick, but I don't know. I think some of mine have separated a little bit. This one seems to be pretty fine, but it's pretty much the color I want. It's like a light peach. And as you fill in everything, the guidelines will get covered up, so you don't have to worry about cleaning them up. And then grabbing my little paintbrush again. So I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to Ireland and Portugal. It'll be Adam and I's first international trip together, so I'm super excited. And I was thinking about filming some stuff while I was there. I wanted to vlog, even though I know a lot of you don't like vlogs, but I still want to do it because it's still a way for me to remember the trip because I always rewatch my vlogs like years later. So I want to do it even if just for myself. But I want to know what you guys want to see from the trip. Is there anything in particular you would like to see? Or would like to see me do while I'm there? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. I also thought about doing a video on what I'm packing with me on my trip and how I pack my makeup for my trip. So if that's something you are interested in, let me know. But yeah, I'm really excited. And then next up is going to be the Ciate Liquid Velvet Lipstick in the color Swoon. I almost read that as Nooms because it was upside down. It's a slightly darker nude color, and that is going to fill, hmm, I think that these are like too similar. And the next color is this, I don't even know what brand it is, there's no name, there's no nothing on it. Let me try mixing these two, Ugh, I probably should have done it on the back of my hand. But let me do that before it dries. Okay, I like that a little bit better, just adding a little bit of purple to it. Probably gonna add another line in the back here just to close it off. Then I'm gonna go with this unnamed lipstick. It's kind of sheer though. I think it's reading a little too pink so I might mix in the darkest color in with it. And that is the Rimmel Stay Matte Liquid Lip Color in the color Rosetto Liquido. So I'm just going to mix some of that in there. Might have to mix some more. So this is still looking pretty pink. Let's mix a tiny bit more. And in case you're wondering, no, it does not feel pleasant to have lipstick all over my face. This one in particular is quite drying, so it's like weird when I move my face. It feels kind of stiff. Ooh, I like that color. Then I'm going to use the darkest color by itself right here. Oh, but it's looking pretty similar. So I think I'm going to take my black opal color splurge liquid matte lipstick, which is a tiny bit darker. Then I'm going to add that. There we go. So I've done my face and my neck. And I think I'm going to fill in my eyelids with the darkest color. And I'm also going to use it on my lips after I've done foundation in the middle of my face. But I just want to try this whole eye situation out. Not sure if this lipstick is eye safe, so I'm doing this at my own risk. Do not do this at home. Unless it is eye safe, then feel free. And then I'm also probably going to do like a black liner along my lash line. So I actually don't need lipstick right close to my lash line. And that's probably safer too, just in case it's not super eye safe. And then while this sets, I'm just going to go in with the Milk Makeup Blur Foundation in the center of my face. Just because I've got some redness around my nose and I just want to make sure I even out that skin tone. So I'm just taking it on a concealer brush so that I can be more precise with the application and just filling in this middle section. This will also help cleaning up the black lines a little bit. If you're really precise with your application, you can help sharpen them up a little bit more. This feels so funny, just applying like foundation to this little area on my chin. Now that the center of my face is a uniform color, 
I'm going to set everything with powder now that everything has pretty much set by itself. I still need to set it with powder. As you can see, it's creasing in my eyelids and I have definitely creased under my eyes. And I've been doing this for about like four hours, so I am getting pretty oily in my T-zone. So I just want to set everything once and for all. So I'm just taking my brush and smoothing this out. And then after I set it, I'm going to go back and fix all the black outlines that need to be fixed. So to set it, I'm going to be using translucent powder and I'm using it in this little applicator. I'm going to try to work fairly quickly just to get my under eye area and my lids. And if you haven't seen me use this before and you're asking yourself, what the hell is that? This is a fake hair applicator. <clears throat> it does blow a lot of um, powder into the air, but it's great for looks like this where you don't want anything to move. You want to set everything, but you don't want to touch it because you don't want it to move. And so I like going in with a layer of powder like this with this applicator and then making sure everything's set with a brush this just helps to hold it in place and make sure to get my neck too I feel like I'm putting on perfume I wish at least I wouldn't be eating so much powder so after that I get powder on my brush just apply it like this because I don't actually have the powder outside of this applicator here with me. And then I'm just going to press it in like you would normally to make sure that everything is well set. And you don't want to brush like that. You just want to press because you don't want to move any of the creams that are on the face. Okay, now that everything's set, I'm going to go back in and touch up a few of the black lines like here where I messed it up by going over it with the concealer and so on and so forth. I'm just going to fix some of the black lines. I'm going to outline this part. I should probably use my other brush for that. To do my eyeliner, I think I'm going to go in with the Suva Beauty Hydra Liner in the color Grease, and it is their black. Just using this because it's a slightly different consistency than the Wolf Face Paint, and this is specifically made for the area around the eyes, even though they are very, very similar. So make sure to wait for that to dry before you open your eyes. And I'm also going to use it to fix the black lines around the eye. Now, since I'm still here on the eyes, I'm going to go in with the Milk Makeup Gel Liner in the color Boss. It's their matte black. And I'm going to use that to tight line my waterline. I'm going to make sure I really work it into the root of my lashes because I don't want any skin showing through. And I'm also going to take it and tight line the top. See how much more polished that looks? When you have black around the eyes, you pretty much have to fill in the waterline, otherwise it just looks incomplete. There we go. And I'm not even gonna bother with lashes. I don't even think mascara, should I? I honestly don't know. I think I might just cause, just cause. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with the Hourglass Caution Mascara. I'm gonna really load my bottom lashes with this. This is my favorite mascara for bottom lashes. Gives a really intense, bold look. And then I'll apply some to the top as well, because why not? Even though you will barely be able to see it. Okay, and to finish this off, I'm going to go in with my black opal lipstick, and I'm going to fill in my lips. This is the darkest color that I used in the design, so having it on my lips will kind of bring it out a little bit more I think or I hope so and I'm definitely gonna need a little lip brush to help me apply this because you can bet your ass I'm gonna overline my lips that's the lips done I was gonna say that this is the look done but I kind of feel like if I put some gloss on these lips it would look really really good so let's try that real quick I'm going to take the LA Girl Clear Gloss Topper and I'm just going to... 
Yeah, because I feel like everything is so matte that having a glossy lip gives a nice added detail. Just have some different texture in here. It's always nice to mix up your textures in your looks. And I think now the look is done. Although I'm like, should I put on fake lashes? I don't even think they'll do much of a difference, but I'm gonna try it real quick. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> okay, so I ended up putting on some lashes by Black Moon Cosmetics. This is in the style Cancer, and I'm really glad I did because it does add an extra oomph to the look. And this is finally the finished look. It only took me like five hours, Jesus Christ, like four and a half. Ugh, but it was harder than I thought it would be. Now I've backed up so you can see the full look. So yeah, this is my little Iris Van Herpen inspired look. I wish I could own like every single dress by her. If I was famous and had to walk over red carpet, I would 100% wear one of her dresses. I don't know why the entire red carpet isn't filled with her dresses. But anyway, I digress. I am weirdly aware of my ears right now. I don't know why I think they really stick out with this look. I think because my entire face is painted and my ears aren't. But anyway, neither is all of this, so it's fine. Anyway, what was I saying? So that's it for today. I really hope you like this. I had a lot of fun doing this. I want to start doing weird stuff like this more often where it is still fashion, but it's not not normal. I don't I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I think this is still very much very pretty, but I could definitely imagine this in like a magazine editorial or something. Oh, you know what this is reminding me of? Alex Box, how she does a lot of geometric shapes and stuff. And I absolutely love her, so I wish I had like a tenth of her talent. But anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you to all my Patreon patrons, and I will see you next time. Bye!